All right. Uh, hey, friends. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Jeff Fee here at Squadron with uh, Squadron Facebook Live. And uh, today we're going to do it a little bit different. Well, actually, it's the same thing, but we're going to talk about airbrushing and airbrushes. It's not a sales pitch. It's just some friendly advice from the happy place here and from uh, yours truly about the anxiety that usually goes together or is associated with airbrushing. And, uh, but the way we're gonna do it differently, uh, it's gonna be like a Q and A. So I got some people here in the cheap seats. Uh, they will assist me. So if you have a question about airbrushes or airbrushing or paint, and uh, you have an issue with that or anything, or you wanna ask me a question, please do so. Maybe I can help you and maybe I can teach you something or I can learn from you. Uh, if you have any ideas, please. Uh, just uh, uh, inject it into the conversation and then we'll go from there. Now, we all been there. We all, you know, we build a model, you work on it a day, a week, a month, a year, sometimes even longer, and then there is the anxiety. Finally, your model is finished and you have to slap a base coat of paint on there. And uh, I'm the same way. Uh, although I've been doing this for a long, long time, uh, every time I finish a project and I have to paint it, there is always uh, the like the scenario uh, the night before of like uh, of thinking about it. It's just like like a like an issue. It's like a, 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 almost getting close to bedwetting, you know. Like uh, just uh, thinking about it in the morning, I have to put paint on it, and I spend so much time building that model. But it shouldn't be that way uh, because airbrushing, you know, <coughs> uh, these days. With today's technology, to, the airbrushes are out there, the paints are out there, the products are out there. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier than it used to be. But still, uh, it's still a, a big deal because you know as well as I do, uh, once you put paint over it and it doesn't go all that well, that's, that's really a disaster. You know, the, the, you can't clean it off or anything. And a lot of guys uh, are, are just, just uh, anxious about it. So let me talk a little bit about airbrushes and this is more meant for the novices out there or for the guys that are just getting back into the business, um, into the business, into the industry or back after, uh, that came back after a while or for people that just started in, into, the, uh, uh, into the hobby and hopefully a lot of, uh, a lot of young kids uh, are watching this. Uh, what, if you're not familiar with painting and, and you want to uh, basically move on uh, to an airbrush, what airbrush should you buy? Now, that is maybe a, a little bit more complicated question. Well, the answer is actually a little bit more complicated. What airbrush do you buy? What is the best airbrush out there? Well, again, uh, there, is, there is many. You can go from $50 all the way to two, $3,000. Do you need a $3,000 airbrush? Absolutely not. Do you need a $1,000 airbrush? Absolutely not. You don't even need a $500 airbrush. Now, if you stay within the $50 and $300, that's where the safe zone is. That's where you get start to get really good quality. But again, you do not need a high-end airbrush to do what we do because it's absolutely not necessary. And just to, to uh, make a point, my career, if you can call it that, uh, about for the last 40 years, if I do it as a professional, the first 30 years, I used this. And this is uh, for uh, old school people maybe. Uh, this is a Badger, uh, a Badger 200 and uh, a very cheap airbrush. And uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit. I think I got a question out there or something. Yeah, Jerry Hendrickson would like to know when you got your first airbrush. Oh, uh, hey Jerry, uh, thanks for tuning in. My first airbrush, and that's a story by itself, I'll tell that, and maybe I'll tell that a little later uh, in another <laughs> video. Uh, I was about, uh, I think about nine years old. It was completely made out of plastic. I can't remember, I think it was a badger, but I, I can't remember for, for, for sure, I have to look that up. But it was just a plastic uh, airbrush, there was no fine tuning, and uh, it, it, it worked uh, for what I needed back then uh, as a young, uh, young kid. Uh, so uh, that was my first one. Then I stayed for the longest time, for the longest time, like I said, for, for many, many years, I stayed with the Badger 200. Now the Badger 200, you can find these between 50 and $90 retail, depending where you buy it, uh, and depending on the discount you get or if they are on sale, but this is a very, very durable uh, airbrush. Very simple, very simple to maintain. The only thing that maybe 
the guys that are more weakened in, in airbrushing would mind is it's not double action. This is single action. So whenever you airbrush, you just have to manipulate the needle with your other hand. While in uh, today's airbrushes, it's all double action. But this is uh, this is something I did most of my work, even when I worked for Linden and all and all the the, the dioramas and, and the airplanes I, I I built was all with a Badger 200. So. If you're out there and you're looking to start uh, in this, uh, in, with this hobby and you really want to uh, graduate in, in painting, then you should maybe think about getting this. Another one is, um, is uh, I moved, then I, I basically graduated uh, on the uh, Iwata. Now the Iwata airbrush, uh, this is an HPC Plus, and the Iwata airbrush is, um, it's to me, and again, this is personal. It's nothing uh, somebody out there, uh, if you are custom with another airbrush, uh, like uh, they have Tamiya airbrushes, they have uh, uh, Badger airbrushes, Grex, uh, Pache, uh, even ICM as airbrushes. If you're familiar with that and you're comfortable with that, stick with your gun, uh, you can't go wrong. For me, uh, I think personally, for what I need it for uh, as a professional and, and just uh, in my spare time, is an HPC Plus from Iwata. Uh, it's not really high-end because uh, Iwata has several levels. Uh, some of them go all the way to $1,000, but this retails about, depending where you find it and the discount, to go around $250. There is another one, like maybe a step up you can look at, uh, gives you a little bit more trinkets. But basically, all you need, uh, it's all about the nozzle and the needle. That's all it counts. Uh, as long as you maintain those and you take care of it, then you should do fine work uh, with any airbrush. But this is a good one, a very sturdy one. This is my workhorse. Now, if you're out there and you're like, uh, let's say you're, you're, you're new, you never handle the airbrush and you're, you're really afraid uh, to basically uh, buy an airbrush and, and you also have to get like a little a compressor and all that kind of stuff. So you, you're looking at prices and it might be uh, very expensive. Uh, uh, you got another question? I do. Uh, Brian Cavert is asking when he brushes Vallejo, and you've had this problem too, mm -hmm. you always have issues with the tape pulling up. Is yes. there anything he can add to not have this happen? Uh, the only. Uh, uh, is Brian? Brian? Is Brian Cavert. Yeah, hey, hey, Brian. Uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. Yes, Vallejo. Uh, and I will get to that a little bit later, but since you asked the question, might as well uh, talk a little bit about that. Vallejo is excellent, very excellent paint. The only beef or beef, is it beef or beef? Beef. 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 In my beef? case, it might be beef. Because anyway, I, that is when you don't respect the dry time enough and you want to rush it a little bit, uh, Vallejo has a tendency to peel, yes, uh, more so than any other paint. Now, that's also because it's kind of a latex kind of a paint, you know, it, it, it forms a peel almost immediately and if you really rush it and it, it, the, the paint didn't dry long enough, and I'm talking about at least 24 hours, if you have to do some, uh, really some serious masking, then you run almost 75-80% risk of pulling the tape off. Now of course, I don't know how you apply the tape, but if you apply the tape, you try to get some of the tackiness off, like uh, they sell a lot of uh, uh, modeler's tape, like the yellow stuff you find from Tamiya, uh, even Vallejo has it. And you, what I usually do is like I, I, I tear off a strip of the roll and I put it on my pants a few times. So most of the glue uh, comes off already and then I lay it on there. I really don't, don't rub it on there, but I, I try to lay it on there so softly, uh, maybe tap it a little bit and that should take care of the problems. But Either, either if you, even if you prime it, even if you prime the Lego paint or anything, still, the, the clue is uh, dry time. Uh, try not to rush it, uh, at least wait 12 hours to 24 hours, even longer if you can, if you can put it away, if you have to do some decent and serious uh, masking, put it away on the side and do something else and then go back to it, and then you probably will take care of the problem. But with Vallejo, always, always, always be very careful. Adding to that, uh, Mike Hydro would like to know if you have a preferred primer. Preferred primer. Hey, Mark. Um, primer, the same thing. Uh, I like I like Vallejo. Uh, uh, Vallejo has a good primer too, of course. 
but my preference, the, my primer preference, if I can call it that way, is, is the Mia. The Mia primer, the one in, even actually the one in the spray can. You can always spray it in a cup and then do it in your airbrush. But the, for me, the, the one that I trust the most so far to this day is the Mia primer. So let's continue with the airbrush. Now again, uh, if, you're not, if you don't have an airbrush and you never uh, used an airbrush, you're not familiar with an airbrush, and you're very scared to buy something or invest uh, some of your budget money into uh, an airbrush or a compressor, I would suggest uh, going with this. This is, uh, we, have this, uh, we have this on our website too, but uh, together, this set actually here, the airbrush plus the compressor, is, uh, retails about $120. So you can't go wrong. Even if the airbrush is not what you really were looking for, uh, you still have a compressor. And tell me, I used to, I have a compressor at home. I used to, I bought that like many years ago and I already paid $400 back then. But this is, this is absolutely uh, a very good compressor. Uh, of course, it doesn't come with a, with a um, um, how do you call it? A little uh, barrel? Uh, no, the, a the, dial? The, no, 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 no. I can't pressure gauge? Sorry. No, <laughs> uh, a reservoir uh, oh, okay. to catch the air. Uh, I don't know how to call it. So that's a little because it's, once you airbrush, it constantly uh, starts huffing and puffing. But it does the trick. It also comes with a gauge, with a pressure gauge, and it comes with a water trap. So you can't go wrong with this. Then talk a little bit about the airbrush. <clears throat> now the airbrush, uh, when you look at it closely, I got another one here, just to mess with this. This is the same airbrush, and look, this is my $250, $270 Iwata, and this is the, the one that comes with the set. They look exactly almost the same. If you look at the front, except for a couple more, a couple little refinements, they look exactly the same. And I have a video out there. You can look at it uh, at Squadron. Uh, you can see uh, the difference uh, in airbrushes. And there's a video where we, I do a test between those two. And trust me, uh, the results are very close. Yes? Gary Kawabata wants to know, is there an advantage to a top feed versus a bottom feed? That's a question of preference. Uh, I, again, for 30 years, I used the bottom feed uh, because you have a grip in a way. It's like, you, it's like holding a gun and, and, and it's easy to manipulate. But now more and more, I like the top feed. Uh, I don't know, personally, I don't know any difference uh, as long as the paint comes out of the nozzle and I can regulate it, I'm fine with it. But I prefer the, the, the top feed now because I can, I, you know, it's, it's, you get, over the years you get more experience in, and used to it. The only bad thing is about it, don't forget to put the lid on there because on <laughs> many, many, many times, and I still, I even had it last week, uh, even being distracted and you turn it a little and the whole thing, uh, gets all over the place. So that's the only, uh, the only back. Uh, the, the downside of the top feed? Yeah, uh, is, is basically, um, if you don't cover it up, you might spill some paint. But other than that, uh, these days, it's almost 75% is top feed. And uh, I, it, there must be something that I don't know uh, that probably why manufacturers do it more this way than the bottom feet. But uh, for me, it never made a difference. It was just a, a, a question of being experienced and, and being comfortable with it. So again, talking about this uh, cheap airbrush, uh, if I would, let's say that this was the last airbrush I ever would get my hands on, or I, that this would work perfectly fine, and, and it's part of the $120 deal, so you can't go wrong. If you're out there and you never handle the hand, uh, an airbrush, if you never, uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of money in the beginning, then uh, I would take a closer look to this because uh, it's easy to maintain, it's double action, it's top feed, and uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money. So then uh, the, most of the questions, the other questions I get is um, about pressure. You know, what pressure do I use to, uh, to airbrush? And the answer is very simple. Uh, it also depends on the age of your airbrush and on the, on the nozzle. If the nozzle is wore out or the needle is wore out, there might be a, a little bit different in, pr in pressure uh, or even in, uh, in mixing the colors. But the, the basic pressure, it should be around uh, uh, 25 PSI. Uh, 25 PSI might be a little high, but it's actually not. 
and, and again, it, it, depending the paint you use and, and what kind of a paint, 20, 25 PSI and up, you can go all the way to 35 depending the work you're doing. But that's where the, the, the little area where you should stay between 25 and 35 PSI. And then of course, uh, experience. You know, if, if you see it's not working for you, then you either reduce it or you uh, up it a little bit. But you should be safe by uh, setting your, your thing uh, on 25 PSI and then uh, you should be good to go. Another question? Uh, yes, Mark is asking, what do you do to stop paint drying on the needle? Well, there, is not, there, there are retarders. They call them paint retarders. Uh, you add a couple drops in there. Vallejo has them, uh, Michel Model has them, uh, Shortamia has them. And it's a, it's a little liquid. It looks, uh, it looks a little bit like, like a, a, a more thicker paint thinner. And you do a couple drops in your, in your uh, reservoir here. And that should stop, or at least uh, slow down the dry time of the paint because we all know uh, spraying dust like we call it uh, it's absolutely uh, a nightmare. Now <clears throat> a good thing to avoid that or one of the things to avoid that is to take the cover off like you know the front let me see if I get, yeah there is uh, a, the needle protector so you can see actually the needle sticking out there so this is only this little uh, tip that you screw off is only the protector. It doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, function. Uh, 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 function. Function. I'm so. I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, it's very hard to get out of my my words today. Luckily, I have some helpers here. Right. But uh, yeah, it it actually doesn't have any function. Uh, this is just to protect your tip. Now the backdrop of this is if you put your airbrush down or you bump it into something, you bend your needle. So you have to be really really careful. But that's one of the things. That you can take off if you're constantly thinking about okay i have to be really careful then that is one of the things that would prevent dr uh, your paint drying a little bit early or actually getting drops because or splatters because sometimes at the tip at the tip here you will see that there is a, a little paint accumulation and then when you keep doing that the paint will add on it's like clogging up an artery you know it gets worse and worse and worse and then finally you get this this uh, this massive splatter on your on your model and you don't want that. So taking the tip off uh, is something to consider. Now, <clears throat> most, of the, most of the modern airbrushes, like the, uh, I don't know if it's on this one, uh, but most of the modern airbrushes, they already have uh, like tips that, that is divided. They have like notches in there, so that already takes care of it. But uh, honestly, to come back to your question, uh, to avoid spray painting, um, I mean, to avoid spraying dust, don't get too close, don't open it up too wide, but think about adding a, a, a retarder, a paint retarder, a couple drops into your cup, uh, and that should take care of the problem. Now, let's say, it's, a, it's actually a good question, because let's say, let's say that you have some dust sprayed on there, and usually when you work on an airplane and you try to uh, airbrush the, the stabilizers and you have to go underneath, you have all this dust accumulation in there, that's where the paint dried, before it, it basically reached the model and you have this this really really grainy feeling you can take that off without redoing the model you just have to get like a like between an eight thousand or, or twelve thousand uh, of grit of sandpaper which is hardly any and you can easily easily uh, wipe that off uh, you can sand it off literally and it will all disappear the paint won't come off you just take care of the dust you don't have to uh, redo your, your your paint job or anything just get some uh, some 6,000, 8,000 or 12,000 uh, sandpaper and just uh, uh, wipe it off. And then eventually when you uh, add like a flat coat or a gloss coat, it will all go away and uh, it's all gone and you didn't have to do uh, or redo the paint job. Speaking of the needles, mm -hmm. Carol Davidson asks, uh, does the different size needle make a huge difference and what is the different uses for them? Uh, needles, needles of course, there is a, you have the fine, you have the medium, you have the large, and it all depends, of course, uh, it all depends what kind of work you're doing. If you're, let's say, if you're a car modeler or you're an armor modeler, you can easily get away with maybe a large needle if necessary because the camouflage is not, in, it's not all that specific. You also uh, don't have to, uh, let's say, if you do put a base coat, you know, you don't really have that, that narrow pattern you have to spray. So a large and medium would be fine. If you are uh, 
an airplane builder and you do camouflage, that's a different ball game. So then I would start at least with a medium and, and then, or a fine needle. But I would suggest if you don't really know what to do, just stay in the middle, just get, for, get the, the medium. I think as far as I, I know, I always use the med uh, a medium needle. So I don't use the fine uh, and uh, I don't use the large. I always stay with the medium because with the medium you can do fine work and you can do decent uh, uh, the large the large uh, areas too in, in no time. So the needle is only imp important if you have to do extra fine work. Then you might concentrate and say, okay, uh, I just want to only deal with a fine needle and a fine nozzle. But if you're just a, a general modeler like we all are, like myself, uh, go with the medium. Uh, you should be fine. Another needle question. Mm -hmm. Mark Sprayberry wants to know what do the numbers on the needle mean? Well, the number on the on, on the needles uh, is uh, of course the, the size of the needle. Uh, it's uh, it, it's like uh, the like uh, the inches. Yeah, yeah, like like a one thousandth of a, of an of an inch. Uh, I, there is you can easily look that up, but it's uh, it, it has to do with the size of the needle, like the the, the thickness of the needle. Uh, I think there are two or three sizes that generally are there. Uh, I, I, it's actually a good question and I, I read up uh, a couple months ago, I was reading up on it and because I didn't know what it was, but apparently it's just the sizes. So it, it's if you have like a, like a, 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 a 2.0 or 2.5, 2.8, that is, uh, I, I don't know if it's inches or millimeters that it's, it's oh, part of that. It's millimeters. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just a size. So the, the, the smaller the size, I mean, of course, the finer the needle. Then, uh, of course, last but not least, it's the paint. Now, there's a lot of paint, and in the beginning, I, I, I talked about the anxiety of airbrushing. And, you know, in the old days, uh, there was only either, actually, there was only an enamel available, and sometimes when your paint was bad, and you could already smell it in a way, but sometimes, yeah, you know, let me try it one more time, and then you spray it, and oh my God, whole thing is ruined because you had some glossy spots you had like like a, a uh, like a, a northern spiel uh, and that that was a, a disaster these days honestly of all the brands that are out there Vallejo Tamiya uh, Mission Models True Color uh, Mr. Mr. Hobby uh, Guns Asenio all these paints you can hardly do anything wrong uh, they last a lot longer than the old the old guard paints uh, but you can't do uh, a lot wrong with those paints. So if you're familiar with something, uh, or even if you're a novice and you just want to try something, uh, start with Vallejo, start with Tamiya, you can't go wrong. And again, uh, last but not least, it's always better to use too much thinner than too little thinner, because the more thinner you use, the, the th of course the thinner the paint becomes, but you can always add another layer. It's better to have to do it twice than to do it once and it, it, it's like too thick and, and there's nothing you can do about it. So always think like, uh, let me add a, a couple more drops of, of, of thinner and see how it goes and then you can add on and finish the job. Also, um, the, uh, the, the thinner, uh, I, a lot of questions I get, how much thinner do you use? My golden rule, I mean, and, and eventually you will feel it. You just have to feel it and lift the, the, it's just how the drop falls. You know, I don't know how to explain that, but it's just a feel that you get after a while. But usually I use about uh, 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 three fifths of paint and two fifths of thinner, or maybe one third of thinner and two thirds of uh, thirds. Say that again, uh, uh, thirds of thinner. So uh, again, start, start, with, if you're not sure, add a little bit more thinner than making the mistake and, and just uh, spray it straight out of the box because some manufacturers, they say, you can use it straight out of the box. You have to be really careful with that, uh, straight out of the box, straight out of the can. You have to be really careful with that because uh, if you go into the metallics, like let's say, for, let's take Vallejo for a change, um, for an example, their metallics, their metallic paint line, best out there, you can spray that straight out of the bottle. Not so good with the uh, with either the uh, their Vallejo Air or Vallejo model paint. Uh, you have to really thin that. Even the, 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 the paint, the model Air that is made for airbrushing, you cannot uh, spray that straight out of the bottle because that's too thick. You always have to add some 
some uh, so be very very careful when say yeah you can sp spray it straight out of the box always try uh, first uh, how the paint comes out because 99% you have to add some filler so any more questions about no, that? No, but I no. think we have uh, quite a few who've tuned in. Yeah. Nicole has a list. We've, uh, we've got our shout outs for today to uh, Brian C, okay. Jerry H, Mark H, Gary T, William B, William L, Gary <laughs> K, Robert C, Mark S, and Carol D. All right, uh, hey uh, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you're my regular customer, so I get groupies, I guess. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, ah, glad you're Jeffrey here. Fan Club. Um, and I guess, uh, Reminder uh, for the guests. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, is that next week? Next or? week. I think it's next week, isn't it? Okay. Uh, there might be a, a, maybe a change in, in schedule, but next week we should have our guest here. It's Robert Morrison. Mar uh, Robert is a good friend of mine. Uh, he's also a very regular customer of ours that lives in the neighborhood. But he's somebody who... Yeah, he's uh, here on the 21st. The 21st, okay. Uh, he's uh, supposed to be here as a guest uh, next week uh, just to talk about a little bit about his experience in the hobby industry or in the hobby world. Because uh, I think Robert was always a model, but then he took an hiatus, I guess, for a long time. And then he started coming back and now he's just, uh, I think we created another monster. So Robert will be here talking about uh, his experiences as a modeler and how we got back into the into the hobby and all that kind of stuff. So next week uh, we have our special guest. And then of course, uh, the moment you're all be waiting for, like as always, is the, we're gonna raffle off this uh, wonderful priest from uh, Academy. So okay, Nicole, if you do the honors. Oh, and by the way, for all the ladies that are watching, uh, happy Valentine today. I hope you get uh, a present. Uh, I bought my my wife a colonoscopy this morning, so that's my first thing. <laughs> so that's how I brought my morning through in the hospital, holding her hand. So uh, if you're watching Jill, I'm sorry. I hope you're better now. Uh, She's gonna so me. anyway, She's gonna kill you. why did I say that? I don't know. Oh, you're gonna be dead tonight. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say this, so ignore everything I said. Okay, the winner of this thing is William Lewis Leet. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, hey. Is that your dad? That sure is. That I is. I think my it's father. a little uh, like the French shape. Yes. Uh, the drawing was like vendu, which means like it was all rigged. So this goes to you, William. Uh, hope you are happy with that. Is your father uh, 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 an armor builder? Yes, or? yes, yeah, right. yeah. He then loves models. He's, he's an armor builder. Loves the tanks. Can you fit in one more question before you? Uh, sure, absolutely. So one just came in um, from John Terrell. He has an Awada Gravity Feed airbrush, but a tester's blue compressor. Does he need a better compressor to use that airbrush? No, okay. no. The compressors are just what they do, they compress air. And as long as you get a steady flow and you have a little regulator on there, you should be fine. There, a compressor, uh, there might be a misconception out there, but even if you have a compressor in your garage where, that you use for your nail gun, as long as you have a regulator on there and you can get like 25, 30 PSI, that's, that's fine. Uh, these little compressors, I think they only go to, what is it, uh, uh, to, uh, well actually it says 150, but I don't believe that, but <laughs> any compressor that goes to 50, 60 PSI and up, you should be fine. So no need to buy something else, just make sure that you get the right adapter and that you get a regulator out there and then it's fine. It's just making air. And then, uh, yeah, for the next week's drawing, yeah, you know the drill, please, please, please uh, leave a comment uh, in, the, in the comment section. Uh, subscribe, of course, uh, share this with your friends. I need your help. You need to share this so we can get a lot more traffic here and a lot more popular. Maybe we can do more things. Uh, so, and also, uh, next, uh, oh, this weekend, actually, we have a sale going on. Every, uh, was it every kit? Every, every kit uh, under $50, is it? under $50 is on sale. So uh, this week, uh, this weekend, uh, we have a weekend sale going on, a President, President Day uh, weekend sale, I guess. Every kit that is below $50 is on sale. And then uh, other than that, uh, again, sh uh, share with us on YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook. Did I say something wrong? Because I don't know. You want to show, did you show next week's raffle prize? Oh, no, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Don't, uh, I'm We're getting pushing there. you, Jeff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, you're already. Uh, uh, for next week's uh, raffle prize, uh, we're gonna have two sets. Uh, one is for the U.S., one is for the German, so they, they can find each other. Uh, those are the colors for the uniform. So nice prize. By leaving your comment, uh, by leaving your name in the comment, uh, you're eligible 
to get into the bag and your name can go out and I will get this uh, thing uh, to you as soon as possible. Other than that, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Hope you make the best of it. Uh, buy some flowers, buy some candy or buy a colonoscopy. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's all good. <laughs> it's all well meant. Uh, I didn't know what else to buy. So I surprised her with that and I think she enjoyed it. So, <laughs> so anyway, long story short, I'll see you all next week. Uh, next week's Friday at 3, uh, 12 o'clock Central Time. And uh, that's it for now. Have a good weekend. Jeff here, signing off.